Washington, give me two. At pick number two, the Commanders pulling no surprises, selecting reigning Heisman Award winner Jaden Daniels. The franchise quickly retooling under new leadership, nine picks in all, four to the O side, five, heading to the Commanders' defensive room. Back in the mix, Joe Musso alongside Ryan Wilson, Rick Spielman here to offer grades and analysis for this division. Washington, that's where we start. A volume of picks beyond Daniels as well, but that is the headliner. How does it grade out? A plus, I'll leave with the headline. Uh, six of their picks were all in the top two rounds, and they just hit uh, home run after home run. They're not hitting singles. They're not looking for walks. They're just uh, the, the fastball is being thrown right down the middle, and they're knocking it out of the park. Jane Daniels, obviously, he's going to be the day one starter unless something goes sideways. Johnny Newton, first round talent, slipped into the top of the second there, Rick. And then Mikey Sanders still, the edge rusher, uh, the uh, excuse me, the nickelback we talked a ton about. Ben Sennett was one of your favorite players that tied in. And then the last pick of day two to end the third round, Luke McCaffrey, who went before some other wide receivers, perhaps that we thought, Christian McCaffrey's brother. So you know you have the bloodlines there. And this team looks like it's ready to be serious competitors in, in the NFC East. Yeah, I think they're going to turn it around a lot quicker than people think, especially what they did in free agency. I think the one thing that maybe they didn't address was another edge rusher because they traded both uh, Chase Young and Montez Sweat away. But what, and they signed some guys. They signed a lot of guys. I think mm -hmm. they signed over 20 unrestricted free agents, either their own or they brought in from elsewhere. A lot of one year deals. So this is going to be a quick turnaround, in my opinion. I know Dan Quinn. I worked with him down in Miami. He was actually the defensive line coach for Nick Saban down there. So I know what he brings to the table. If you look at what Adam did on his first draft, I thought he knocked it out of the park. They're very consistent following their draft board and we're going to talk about that a little later mm -hmm. Joe on some of these new GMs and what were their philosophies were but I can tell you Adam Peters stuck to his board how they had to develop and took best players available. I, I love the league webs always intertwined which makes some of this dealing behind the scenes even more interesting. Giants were trying to get a deal done also to get up to that number three pick and land a new quarterback. They do not but they do add some explosiveness and they sure up the secondary. I mean it's been glowing reviews for just about everybody thus far. Do you like what the Giants did? A minus, but only in comparison to the other team in that division that we just spoke about, mm -hmm. the Commanders, of course. Malik Neighbors, he was wide receiver one for, for more than a handful of teams. So that's that feels like stealing at number six. That means you're rolling with Daniel Jones if you couldn't get the, the quarterback you wanted. And that perhaps is a good thing. We'll see. Sometimes trading up, oftentimes trading up doesn't work. Tyler Newbin, Rick and I spoke with him at the combine. He is long. He is physical. Didn't time well, but I think he can still play center field. I, I want to hear what you say about that, Rick. And then one of my favorite players in this draft class, Joe, I, I talked about Ben Sennett going to Washington. My tight end three was Theo Johnson uh, out of Penn State. I, I think it's a little more dynamic than Rick does, uh, but I think he can come in, come in and contribute and, and get better as a blocker and a route runner, but he's 6'5", 260, and he ran pretty well. So I like him as an addition to that offense as well. Yeah, and what they were able to do this offseason, they built up that offensive line, so they're going to give, they go out and get neighbors, who to me is the most explosive playmaker at the receiver position with the ball in his hands after the catch. And they're going to give Daniel Jones the best opportunity to say, hey, this is our guy going forward because mm -hmm. of what they did this offseason. If he doesn't succeed, they're not going to be probably looking for a quarterback uh, next year, next year's draft. But when you go down to Newbin, you go down to uh, Phillips, the corner from Kentucky, they're probably better football players than they are athletes. So if you want to go out and run around in shorts and do all the uh, – combine numbers that we try to check all the boxes on our reports they're probably going to be eh, they're okay but then when you watch the tape they're both very very good smart intelligent football players and then this is probably one of the tight ends we totally disagree on yeah because this kid went to the combine and mm -hmm. he ran what he jumped what yeah. he did what he did do better down at the senior bowl I uh, thought he stuck out a little bit there but this was the one that was opposite of the last two we talked about. This guy is a much better athlete than football player, in my opinion, right now. Well, moving on to our next team here, the Philadelphia Eagles. Howie Roseman must have the unlimited plan on his phone because that was an active phone over the last three days. Nine trades in all, the most we've seen in 33 years in a single draft. He tucks away a third, fourth, and fifth for next year and also addresses needs in the secondary.
feels like this was 3D chess. Is it checkmate? Did they win? What do you like here on the, on the Eagles, Ryan? Right. If you, if you include the future draft picks, it's, it feels like an A+. Plus. But just in terms of the, the haul they got here, mm -hmm. I gave them a B, again, relative to the other teams we're going to talk about in this division. Uh, I love Quinion, love Cooper. Those make so much sense, and, and those are obvious needs. Uh, Rick, I want to get your thoughts on Jalex Hunt. Are you overdrafting a project, a former safety from Cornell who transferred to Houston Baptist to play edge rusher? I thought Will Shipley... He gives you something, but perhaps not as much as you can get from other players at that spot there. I understand that. And I love the Jeremiah Trotter coming back home selection. And um, you think that Johnny Wilson, the wide receiver, 6'7", 237, does he have to move to tight end given the way he played? Yeah, I think that uh, Johnny Wilson, they may look as like a tight end or like a Travis Kelsey type that you mm -hmm. can split him out, put some weight on him. He just needs to be more consistent catching the ball for his size uh, when he's in contested situations or uh, when he's in a battle for the ball in the air. I do love the, the, the way he, uh, how he revamped the secondary. Uh, Jalex Hunt, I watched him. I had a couple tapes. I couldn't believe we had a couple tapes on him. He is as raw as all, as raw as you can get. Sushi. Uh, yeah, but he, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I said, I went to the restaurant with a coach one time and mm -hmm. he said, yeah, wipe its rear end, bring its horns out, and I'll just take my meat that way. <laughs> raw. <laughs> that's Jalex Hunt. That's, Jaylen, gotcha. that's a perfect description of him. But he's long and he's athletic, and these coaches, when they see these guys with unique physical traits, they think they can fix it. And he doesn't have to come in and compete right away. Right. They went and signed Huff out of, of the Jets, who's going to be a big-time pass rusher. I know they lost uh, the uh, uh, Reddick, or who was it that went to, uh, Hassan mm -hmm. Reddick that went to the Jets, so they kind of flopped pass rushers there. But I thought it was a really good draft. In other rooms, you can order that black and blue, which is often <laughs> the brand of football that Philadelphia enjoys. We will see if it is enjoyment in that division. One more to get to here. And Dallas seems notable because following that, uh, uh, you could call it many things, embarrassment at the hands of the Green Bay <laughs> Packers to end the season. I mean, a bunch of fifth-year seniors slapped you on your home yeah, turf. Yeah. Jerry says we're all in. All in all, it's been a bit underwhelming since that statement, but how did they do here in this draft? And you could say the underwhelming... Uh, came to a, a head here with a, an underwhelming draft in mm -hmm. that there was no grand gesture to, to improve the football team. You have your franchise quarterback. Tyler Guyton makes sense. Uh, we'll figure out where he's going to play. He was a right tackle at Oklahoma. Are you going to try him on the left side? That was a conversation during the draft process. Marshawn Nealon is a, a juiced up edge rusher. He is long uh, and he is incredibly physical. We'll, we'll see where he fits in. And Cooper Beebe, again, you're checking boxes and trying to improve the offensive line. But for me, Rick, uh, as I mentioned, I gave the Cowboys a B. There was no Nothing that moved the needle for me in terms of a, 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 the wholeness of the draft class where it feels like uh, you could compare it to what the, the commanders did, for example, or even what the Eagles did. They, they filled some needs. They're a better football team, but I don't know if, if they – the Eagles fan, excuse me, the Cowboys fans have any reason to be any more excited than they were at the start of the preseason. Yeah, no, and I thought they put a point of emphasis on rebuilding that offensive line. I do like Guyton. I thought that was a great pick for them where they picked because they had to move back. I think they believe they traded with the Lions, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, so the Lions can come up and get their corner. Uh, they moved back and still got Guyton, which I think could come in and start immediately. Uh, Cooper Beebe. Whether well, he's going to play guard, he's play tackle, he's not a tackle. Maybe they move him into center because they lost their center to the commanders. So this was kind of like a, I don't want to say bland. It was just not sexy. You know, there yeah. wasn't no. And then the one thing that I thought they would come out of here with was a running back. But then I think uh, Mr. Jones has been talking about the Ezekiel Elliott potential reunion. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why they didn't go there. And please don't say that you love the running back, Jonathan Brooks from Texas. We'd love to take him. And then he was the first running back to go off in the second round before the Cowboys could select him. Not enough seasoning for that steak to go on with this uh, extended metaphor here on HQ. But we'll see what it all adds up to. Our friends at FanDuel adjusting those numbers immediately. Here's a look at the odds to win mm -hmm. the East. Co-favorites, the Cowboys and the Eagles. If history is your roadmap, that plus 120 on the boys. Losing money, an 18-year streak of no repeat winner in this division. We'll see if the boys can buck that trend this year.